in search of an intuitive model for general relativity, an endeavor with a surprising result. Regarding general relativity, gravitation is not a force, but is based on the curvature of space and time. Often the rubber blanket model is used to illustrate general relativity. The rubber blanket model shows the deflection of the orbits of the celestial objects in direction to the central mass. With it, one understands intuitively that the celestial bodies follow the curvature of space and that the reason for this curvature is a bigger mass. However, there are some points that can be criticized. The objects only follow their trajectories because they are pulled down, presumably by gravitation. Therefore, the gravitation is not replaced fully by curvature in the rubber blanket model. One idea to overcome criticism one is to use a toy car instead of a marble. The trajectory of the toy car is even diverted in direction to the central mass if the curvature is the opposite and the marble would fall down. With this model it is comprehensible that the curvature is the reason for the deflection of the trajectory. Why does the toy car follow this trajectory? If it went straight, the path close to the central mass which the left side of the car takes would be a little bit longer than the path further away from the central mass. Only with a deviated trajectory, both paths of the right and the left side of the car are equally long. For symmetry reasons, it's okay that the rubber blanket model simplifies the three-dimensional space into a two-dimensional plane. However, it curves into an additional dimension, while general relativity does not need any additional dimension. To solve criticism 2, the YouTube channel Science Click suggested to look at the rubber blanket model from above and shows this image. However, this image isn't the rubber blanket model from above. This is a MATLAB animation of a paraboloid. If one looks at the paraboloid from below or from above, it is visible that the squares appear not distorted from that perspective. The rubber blanket model from above would look like this. However, this wouldn't be a good model for the curved space. What would be a good two-dimensional model of the curvature of space, which does work without an additional dimension? To find this model, we go a bit deeper into the maths. The Schwarzschild metric describes the curvature of space-time mathematically. The coefficient of the space part of the metric is always bigger than 1 and approximates 1 in the infinity. That means that near the central mass there is more space than further away from the central mass. If this coefficient were 1, the space would be flat. I want to interpret the coefficient as density of space. A graphic visualization is this mesh grid of triangles. It's easy to change the density of the triangles by adding them or taking them away. With squares, unfortunately, it doesn't work. All triangles actually have the same area. That way, they are visualizing the changing density of space and the curvature within the plane. There is a second fold of the illustration of the YouTube channel Science Click. The middle squares become smaller only at the expense of other squares becoming larger. The coefficient of space wouldn't look like that in the Schwarzschild metric. Suddenly there were squares which possess more volume than the squares of the background. Here we go with a 2D visualization of curved space. The trajectories of the objects are diverted in direction of more space. Similar to a car with differently big wheels will be diverted in direction to the smaller, more compact wheel. So far so good. However, general relativity describes the curvature of space-time. So how can the time be included in this model? Let's take a look into the mathematics again. The coefficient of the space part and the coefficient of the time part of the metric are reciprocals. That is true in every spherical symmetric space-time out of the masses. That means that the time is slower where there is more space. The action on our car is the same again. 
the car will be diverted in direction of a slower moving wheel in direction to the center of mass. Finally, our model is a relatively simple one. The mesh grid of triangles that shows that in the center there is more space. Additionally, one has to memorize that the time is running slower where there is more space and that objects are moving in direction to more compact space and slower time. Beware, from now on we are leaving the standard model of cosmology to go first steps on uneven ground. With this model I got a surprising idea. As there is more space with more mass, mass is surrounded by space like its own field. That is the reason why mass curves space, like an electron curves the electric field of a capacitor, because it adds its own field to the pre-existing one. In my opinion, that follows directly from the fact that the curvature of space takes not place in an extra dimension. Until now, most of the models make the assumption of flat background space. This flat background space is only slightly curved by the effects of general relativity. That is visible with the rubber blanket model. It's a flat rubber blanket, slightly dented by the masses. It's also visible in the equations. The coefficient of the space part of the Schwarzschild metric is approaching 1 in the infinity. That shows that the Schwarzschild metric assumes that the background space is flat. From the Schwarzschild metric, Newton's law can be derived, which is well confirmed within the solar system. Deviations from Newton's law within the solar system appear only near the central mass, precession of the perihelion of Mercury. At larger scales, however, there is again a deviation from Newton's law. We measure higher velocities than expected, for example in the rotation curves of the galaxies. To save Newton's law for galaxies, around 1960 dark matter was postulated that couldn't have been found until today. All systems where Newton's law could be confirmed are located in the sphere of influence of a much more compact and far away system, the center of our Milky Way. It is that compact and that far away that we do not measure differences in space-time curvature from it within our solar system, no tidal forces. The background space therefore is flat within our moving solar system. At very large scales, the universe is quite homogeneous. The single galaxies do not move within the sphere of influence of other more massive and more compact sources of gravity. I want to raise the question whether it could be possible that a totally different gravitational law than Newton's holds for galaxies, which can be derived from Einstein's field equations without the assumption of a flat background space. Consequences. The dark matter effect would be explainable without postulating unknown particles. The empty space between the galaxies would be thinner space with faster running time. Light would undergo a net gravitational blue shift by running through those regions of thin space as the space as a whole is expanding. That possibly could explain the dark energy effect. No consequences for climate change. That's a problem we have to deal with on Earth fast.